بنتي جميلة حميني من كل سوء انسيني بالوجود فقاعتي جميلة حميني من كل سوء انسيني بالوجود فقاعتي الجميلة حميني من كل سوء طايريني بالفضاء انسيني بالوجود فقاعتي الجميلة حميني من كل سوء طايريني بالفضاء انسيني بالوجود عبر الجبال عبر البحار خذيني في سماكي دعي الهوى ينسج مجراكي عبر الجبال عبر البحار خذيني في سماكي دعي الهوى ينسج مجراكي صوت مذيع وشعر احتجاجي وأنا أراك ولا أرى سواك Hello and a very warm welcome, everyone, to the fourth episode of Arts Canteen in Conversation. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome our distinguished guest tonight, and that is the incredible multi-talented artist, songwriter, and singer, Ruba Shamshum. Ruba, welcome to the fourth edition of Arts Canteen in Conversation. Nice to see you here. Nice to see you too. And uh, wow, I haven't seen that video in a few years. So thank you for uh, making me watch my, <laughs> my own video. It is an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. I do hope that um, people enjoy the first four minutes of this conversation with these beautiful visuals and music that we've uh, witnessed and seen already. That was Fuqa'at al-Jamila. I think that was the name of the song. Fuqaati. Fuqaati. Jamila is the, the beauty of that Fuqaati. Tell us about 
فقاعتي بليز ربع tell you about فقاعتي um, فقاعتي simply is a safe space um, a lot of people actually ask me if uh, you know if it's a satire or but it really came from a real place that needed a safe space Um, and sometimes I think we feel like, as Palestinians, we feel like we don't deserve sometimes that safe space, or if it's a privilege sometimes. But um, I think everyone deserves deserves that place where they feel um, comfortable enough to, you know, to express emotions, to uh, to make art. Um, and it came from that place of just needing, needing safety and needing to remember uh, beauty in life. And uh, it just came out of me, uh, out of nowhere. And uh, yeah, it's still, it's still a mantra that I repeat uh, today. That was a very good start to this conversation today, Ruba. I was very impressed by the illustration and the artwork in in the video. Can you tell us a bit more about the background of the artist, please? Yes, of course. Uh, the illustrator is an amazing artist that I had the fortune to uh, to meet. Uh, her name is Charlotte Chama. She is a French. Uh, uh, illustrator who now lives in Haifa. Um, mm -hmm. She is amazing, incredibly artistic. Um, she, you know, it, working with her was very, very refreshing. It was very professional process where, you know, she brought something and I, you know, she heard what I needed, but she brought herself into this. She brought her stylistic, um, you know, fresh view into this video. Uh, and it's it's beautiful when you collaborate with people who you trust to bring themselves into your work, you know? Um, sure, sure. Then it really is a collaboration. Uh, I assumed you spend a bit of time with 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 her to to get her into your head and into your um, process of evolving these beautiful ideas step by step. How long it took? It honestly, everything she sketched was just perfect. <laughs> I mean, it didn't, it didn't really need much. Uh, for we didn't force it. It just was a very, very natural process. Um, I, you know, I, I wrote a storyboard, a simple storyboard to what I wanted. I wanted a journey. I felt yeah. like you know, this girl with the with the wild bear mask was going on a journey. And she needed that mask to go into the wild because she was leaving her safe space. And, sure. uh, you know, that, that mask changed from a wolf to uh, an elephant. And in the end, we decided to go with the bear. Um, so everything she sketched was very kind of dreamlike. And uh, even the, under, the underworld, uh, undersea uh, artwork is very dreamy and very... If, if you notice the details there in the yeah, coral. Absolutely. Um, so she, it was perfect. Working with her just completed the project. And I can't imagine the song without this video, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Roba, as, um, as I just wanted to remind our viewers and audiences tonight, who we are very privileged to have on board with us live this evening, is I was one of the luckiest people to um, actually <laughs> be part of the launch of the of the album back a few years ago in London. And um, I do remember vividly all of these visuals and rich mix uh, behind you. And um, everyone was very impressed at the time and kept asking, oh, um, Roba is a very distinguished, unique artist position uh, with her music and visuals in this world. And, um, you know, this uh, take me back to, to Palestine and Haifa again. And, and Nazareth, of course, where you've been brought up and uh, spent most of your life. 
Um, and I just was wondering, is there is any connection between then and now or between there and here, given that the circumstances has changed, the visuals has played a major part in your journey, as you suggested earlier. Uh, sorry, can you can you explain more? What do you mean the connection? Yeah, it, does these visuals reflect your your childhood or or your teens, or is it related to the physical space where you've been brought up in in Nazareth? Hmm. Nice, nice question. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I don't think I don't distinguish my child person from my adult person I, I i think especially as an artist you can't get rid of that side of you um so i am still that child um and i think if you listen carefully you can hear that in all of my my music m all of my music has a bit of uh, childlike elements or some, someone who is looking for something. Um, so basically, I, I wrote this song when I was in Ireland. Uh, it was, I, I think, two years after uh, I left my home. And um, I mean, nothing comes from nowhere, you know? There was a journey in the video. There, there is a journey of looking for something. And I'm sure, you know, in my subconscious, I would thinking about that place of actually leaving home and going to this new place and trying to find myself yet in that process not you know not forgetting the things that make me feel good about myself um because i do one thing that i did learn from you know going from one country to the other is learning to carry my home on my back wherever I go um, like a turtle that's a very important thing in order to keep your sanity in order to to feel good about yourself about your new life wherever you are you do need to take some things that remind you of that home um, yeah. yeah and um, the journey has ended up um, few years ago in Ireland and um, this is where you met these fantastic musicians and you created your own band back in Dublin I remember and then you were able to tour with the band elsewhere in different parts of the world including Egypt and Palestine and France and some other places I was wondering what it takes from Roba Shamshum to be able to, br to bring these incredible talented musicians from all over the world to play these tunes and to be harmonically uh, 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 in, in one place. This must be a hard work for you. Um, not really, because... Um, no? But first of, all, first of all, let me just uh, correct you. The, the song that we just heard it was actually recorded in the Golan Heights with uh, Rami and Hassan Nakhli um, mm -hmm. but the album was recorded in Ireland you're right about that um, it wasn't dif as difficult as I thought it would be actually to to find these musicians because I was studying uh, in a music school in in Dublin so that really helped me find uh, my network it really helped me uh, you know, meet great musicians. Um, even, you know, my teachers were playing with me. Uh, there was no, there was, there was no this, you know, this ego, ga ego game where, you know, you feel like, oh, I'm a teacher, so don't, I don't play with my student. There was only musicians playing together. It was uh, very refreshing, very nice. Uh, I learned so much um, about music, about musicianship, about how to be a band leader, which is not an easy thing to do at all. Sure. Um, sure. In terms of like, you know, how to balance yourself as a musician, but also I was the manager of myself. Um, I managed my band, I managed my career. So 
these these were the difficult things actually these are the challenges of uh, an independent artist i guess ruba where mm -hmm. you know you have to handle everything yourself from a to z yeah i mean it's a very um it's a very good experience because you you learn where your limits lie and you learn where uh, you shine the best <laughs> you, you know where okay. you're actually good at something and when maybe you're not as good at other things um and it really got me out of my bubble doing all of these things you know it really i was in the wilderness trying things uh, failing at things so yeah it was a good learning experience yeah and um, about the challenges and life and management and music i guess mm. these are also a very interesting times that we live in with the pandemic and covid and um, I was thinking, how are you managing these months and months now of the lockdown with, uh, with hardly any live music scene to be uh, mentioned here? <laughs> Can you tell us about your time, please, Roba? How are you spending your time? Um, I was lucky to have recorded, to have started to record my uh, my ep just before the you know the pandemic started uh, just before the lockdown but started in back in february march of this year yes yeah. yeah so i i had already recorded three songs i was very lucky to have um to have them ready so i had at least something to work with i, I worked with on the mat on the mixing on the mastering um but it hasn't been easy of course because it's not like you know um we can see the light at the end of the tunnel um, no one knows what's going to happen at the beginning i was trying to force myself to be inspired trying to force um trying to force myself to be creative maybe that's the um but some some days would be just too difficult some days would be you know the energies would be low so i would let myself i would let myself go with whatever i feel i did not force myself you know too much to be in a place where i i didn't want to be yeah um, and you know it's and and and, and uh, back to the ep would we be able to listen to some of this stuff soon hopefully yes hopefully yes 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 hopefully before the end of the year uh we will start maybe uh, maybe there is something that we can celebrate despite all of these <laughs> very <laughs> very difficult times yeah i'm very excited about this next uh ep uh it's uh it consists of five songs uh mm -hmm. three that are already ready for release um all produced and recorded here or somewhere else sorry to interrupt yes no problem it's uh it's produced by a great musician singer and producer and her name is alev lenz she um so she we recorded we started recording uh the album in her studio here in london um mm -hmm. and you know it's been great working with her such a very, very, um, what's the word? I learned so much from her and just to see such a good female producer gives me so much to hope for, for myself in the future. So you, you feel know? very comfortable with her production? Yeah. And I her mean, way she, of... Yeah, the, first of all, the way she believes in the material it's great it's beautiful the, the way she notices little details although she does not speak arabic she notices notices words and she, she noticed actually a mistake that was in one of the words no one else who speaks arabic noticed it uh, just because you know she's really invested in the music and right. uh, she what i loved about working with her is that she did not try to change um my music she only elevated it 
she took it to the next level um so you can you can feel that i am in there you know it's not something wow. that is yeah. i can't i can't wait i guess all audiences and fans also are um uh, you know, uh, in, in waiting for this exciting news and hopefully, fingers crossed, things will go very well by the end of this year, Roba. That's fantastic. So now, back to these um, uh, stops on the journey, as you described them. Uh, now you are based in London. Um, did you notice much changes in, in, in your career because of where you are? Or do you... Um, do you have any observations in particular as an independent artist that you would like to comment on? Well, um, Ireland, Ireland was very, very good for my career. Um, it was such a good place um, to establish myself. Um, also because of the size of Dublin, you know, Dublin is not a very as big as London. Um, so and I was in the jazz uh, community, so it was a very small community and almost everyone knew everyone. Um, coming to London was a bit daunting. It's um, a much bigger city, geographically and musically, you know, the music scene is so huge here that sure. I, I feel like you need to give yourself time to, to get to know um, the city, to get to know the venues, the festivals, the musicians, and it, it all takes time. You know, you can't force things like this. Absolutely. Uh, but to your question, I do feel like things move faster here in, in terms of if, you know, getting to know people, um, you feel like things are happening. You, you feel like things are moving. Um, yeah. What is um, the major powerful part of, of your career, Ruba? What is you really do impact what do to mean? the music scene today? You, you know, we live in a very competitive um, environment and every day there is hundreds if not thousands of new projects emerging from the arab world and beyond and um seems to me like you you are focused and determined to 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 survive and to deliver something completely different and unique what what is this driven power that m makes you proud and delivering all of these fantastic amazing projects that you are doing well first of all like you said it's um it's um well, you need you need to pres with resistance basically you need to stay in the game um because you know it's it's not an easy one uh like you said it's a very competitive um, environment, and if we let it, if we let that side of it um, control us, then we're doing it for the wrong reasons. Sure. We need to remind ourselves all the time: why, why are we doing this? Why do we? Why do I wake up in the morning and decide to write a song? And if you know, it, it needs a lot of digging to really understand the reason behind, behind this. Um, but after you do, after you, you understand the core of, of your existence as, as an artist, what drives you to, to, to make, to create, uh, I think you, you feel comfortable. And when you realize that this is not a short, uh, a short game, this is for the long run, this is a lifestyle then it just becomes part of you i think and yeah. you know the number games does not matter to you anymore because it's not about that um yeah. numbers come and go today people can buy numbers today people yeah. can buy um is, is my video okay yeah maybe um 
will will get an advice from the producer. Probably it's the internet connection. Roba, you shouldn't uh, worry much about it. We'll come back to normality, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I was yeah. saying that, you know, today people can actually buy followers on social media, so we, we should not let that dominate us. Um, yeah. We should just con concentrate on creating and why yeah. we create. Yeah, absolutely. Roba, the, um, these competitive... Um, um, elements that we talked about, I don't think they um, they perhaps have the same vision like you are, or the same concepts of of career that you 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 are inspiring and uh, uh, delivering. But uh, what I've noticed during our conversations, randomly, you are really enjoying very much teaching as well uh, in your um, part time. And um, do, do you feel that this is something you, you 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 like to do all the time, or is it just um, something you 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 know you you wanted to to feel the responsibility of the knowledge transfer somewhere else? And how do you deal with these students of yours? I'm fascinated to find out more. Um, it's interesting because a part of me. I think if I if I wasn't uh, a musician, I would have been I would have been a teacher of some kind. You know, I don't know what I would have been teaching, but <laughs> I would have been teaching something. Um, yeah. I I really do enjoy the passing of of uh, knowledge, like you said. Yeah. Um, I enjoy maybe because a part of me feels like I needed a good teacher when I was younger. Uh, I needed someone to explain things um, in a way that made sense. Um, and perhaps I, I am trying to be that person now. I'm trying to, you know, pass knowledge uh, in a fun way, in a, in a way where I, I understand that, you know, teachers have so much power. Um, sometimes you don't like your teacher, so you hate the subject. And yeah. Understand there's a lot of responsibility in that. So I want to be that kind of person who makes you love the subject. Even if you're not a singer, even if you're not going to pursue singing, at least understanding that, you know, it's something that is not out of reach. It's something that you can... Um, relate to. Yeah, you can relate to, even if you don't want to pursue it professionally, um, and just make it fun and interesting and yeah and an and easy way of um, of communicating with students and teacher i guess yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and, sure. uh, and Ruba, uh, sorry to to be precise but who who are these people who are these students are they a combination of everyone or or are they uh, young uh, old uh, it's a combination of every age, with, which I love, because it's such a different uh, way of approaching, um, you know, teaching for, for different ages. Uh, I actually love teaching both um, older people and um, kids, because kids have this kind of uh, curiosity and yeah. just so much, you know, um, they're dreaming. They they have a lot of dreams, and you can see it in their eyes. They're imagining how you know they're going to be performing. How they, and at the same time, I love teaching older people because I see how the inner kid is is waking up. How, um, yeah. yeah, it's it's very. That's great. Mm. Roba, I um, I just wanted to highlight something which I think is very important for our audience and um, uh, friends here which is we always agreed in this kind of conversation in arts canteen that all questions are random and it's never really prepared in advance because this is an informal conversation with artists and this is how we really like to um uh, to keep going with this format of informal conversation 
So I just wanted to put a question or, or maybe a few questions to you. Um, if let's say um, you could you could go and open a show for one of uh, of your artists or favorite artists, who this artist would be? Wow. <laughs> I am really into Lisa Hannigan at the moment. Um, Lisa Hannigan is an amazing singer, um, singer songwriter. She she's just beautiful. She has a voice that is it, it's a, a mythical voice. You feel like you're inside of a fairy tale when you're when you're listening to her. So I would love to open for her. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Fingers crossed, Roba. I I never okay. knew this, so I'm really surprised. But that's great. Thank you for the insight. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, great. And um, given that we're going to get this conversation going, um, if there is a message for all of these fans of yours uh, tonight, what, what this would be, do you think, given that they are uh, watching closely what Roba is going to say? Oof. Yeah, I said I don't know. <laughs> That's Come a big question. On, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure there is something in particular that the fans probably are interested to find out, and there is a message that is coming straight from, you know, uh, someone like they follow, like yourself, Roba. Mm -hmm. Especially in these difficult times, you know. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to say that I know that. This year has not been easy for for anyone, uh, more than others, um, some more than others, and I don't know what to say. It's I hope good things are coming. I hope uh, hope is coming. Um, you know, we need to be. Th this year taught us that being close to our loved ones. And, and appreciate I think this is a very important message. You've just delivered something really very valuable. And yeah, um, 2020 was very hard year, and maybe um, being close to each other is something that is is very original and and very authentic and very human as well. And I think it taught us a lot about patience too. This year has taught us how what it means to be patient. You know, sitting in a yeah. in a small flat the, the good for the good news roba is it's only two months left or less than that so hopefully uh, 2021 will bring a uh, much better um uh, you know uh, year, days and, and months for, for for all um also i wanted to talk a little bit about this um environment with online business now because you know there is thousands of events has been, you know, uh, aired online every day. How, how do you feel about, has this impacted your your career in any way? Um, all of this online and, you know, all of these Zooms and the other tools that people use? Has it impacted my career? Um... Yeah, has it, uh, did it slow down or have you start thinking about some alternatives way of getting you know uh, things sorted by by all means or, or tell, what do you feel about how did this impact you the, i i tried to a few performances in the beginning of the lockdown um through online platforms it's nice but nothing nothing will replace playing music in real time with real people for a real audience feeling because that is energy um performances are energies it's it's something that a connection between people and it's not the same it's it's never going to be the same uh hopefully we will find a way um to have you know a safe um a safe space for gigs uh, where people actually can see, you know, musicians in front of them, uh, but still, you know, be safe. And um, I hope we can come up with, with, you know, with a solution 
to this. What do you think, Aster, as someone who, you know, is in this the business? Reason, thank you. The reason why I was asking, Roba, because, you know, I found on your Instagram yesterday a new idea that emerged and you came up with and this is by inviting uh, a beautiful voice next to you to improvise something online uh, for one of the divas uh, 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 songs which was Fairuz, i think so i really was coming from that side of the story where maybe the lockdown and the internet and the online has uh, find its way uh, within the artist and the musician communities to be creative, as you said, and, and, and also to join forces. So maybe this is a way of being um, clever enough to, to keep going and nothing is stopping these musicians of, uh, of delivering their projects and messages through the internet. Um, back to your question, of course, yesterday was a big day for the musicians in the UK. As you know, there was 400 people demonstrating in opposite of the parliament uh, to demand on um, their livelihood and to find uh, some uh, solutions to their situation now, especially when venues are closing down and um, the whole music scene is on its knees. But this will not really uh, stop us of, of keep trying uh, and have this sincere and honest conversation like what we are doing at the moment. I know this is um, uh, something that is uh, very special because, you know, there is no much happening at the time uh, with conversations with artists. It's mainly about productions, or perhaps live shows online. And uh, I thought it's it's interesting to bring your ideas. So I am the host tonight, so I will keep asking you questions, but I do hope I did answer some of these questions, um, if I may. Um, so yeah, we are all in the same boat. We are coming from you know um, uh, the same kind of route. We complement each other as organizations, curators, uh, promoters, and, and venues, and musicians. Um, but I do feel that, you know, this hopefully will be uh, coming to an end soon, uh, once there is a vaccine in place, Ruba. Yeah. So I, I wanted to ask about um, your uh, experience with um, the festivals in particular, because I've noticed that um, you also flew to Canada recently. Well, not recently. I mean, last year, for <laughs> two years ago. Sorry. I, 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 I. Maybe we should take out the 2020 from the calendar. <laughs> uh, I already. But, did. Uh, I already... <laughs> tell me, tell me about the Canada trip, please, because that was fascinating. Yeah, Toronto Palestine Film Festival was such a nice experience. Um, beautiful people, great festival, very organized, uh, extremely friendly. You know, um, I just had a really, really great time. I wish I had more time in, in Toronto to just yeah. get that to That was the farthest that you went uh, uh, in the globe, right? For a live show. For, yes. Yes. For a live show. <laughs> <laughs> Depends where you are in the world, I guess, but... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it was such a beautiful experience. And just, you know, to, to feel like you are recognized by a festival in Toronto, it was... Um, it's great. It's great, really. Just like... No, no doubt in my head that um, the... Masrah Lijnena in, in Egypt was also a very good platform for you to be in Cairo for the first time. That was another place where I really appreciate, you know, them also contacting me and, you know, not, not playing the number games, 
but really looking at the music and the appreciating the art. I really, really appreciate them. And that was a beautiful experience. Masrah al Ginena was just, I, I don't even want to say a dream because it's beyond a dream. I, I When I was planning my future, when, like 15 years ago, <laughs> I used to say Masrah al Ginena, like, you know, like, oh. <laughs> yeah. as if top it's of never the, top of the rank. And, uh, mm -hmm. It was surreal to also like bring my own musicians and my band and have them also have this beautiful experience of, you know, just seeing Egypt for the first time. And yeah. uh, it was great. And of course, Roba, you played back home, uh, invited to, um, to Haifa's uh, film festival. Uh, not film festival. I was a sorry, part of Maharaja, the Sorry, Ma Maharaja, sorry. Sorry. Uh, the Maharaja. first edition, yeah. Uh, the first edition, and I'm very proud of them. Of you know, every year it's getting even you know bigger and bigger, and they're really investing. Uh, people who really, really care about music and about bringing, if we're talking about education, about you know bringing this form of music that is not mainstream to people. Um, yeah. And you know, it's not just about having the beats and and dancing all night. It's not. It's not. It's not about that. And actually, so you this alternative, me, this alternative scene in in Palestine and in Haifa in particular is growing, Groba, right? Yes, definitely, it's growing. Um, again, fifteen years ago, there was not there there wasn't a diversity of. Um, musicians you know playing different so many different instruments uh, i'm not talking about of course uh, traditional arabic music i'm talking about alternative music underground something you know that is not mainstream yeah. today you go and there's so many people who are um you know just aware of of so many genres uh, people who play so many instruments festivals that are becoming bigger and better every year. Um, Despite yeah. all the the political um, uh, and the occupation surrounding, uh, people are still determined and flourishing with the music scene. And this is really, um, is very important to talk about, particularly when it comes to Palestine. I mean, especially because of occupation and because of restrictions, we need to be more beautiful. We need to shine even brighter than ever. We need to show them that we are not what, you know, we, we are bigger than they can ever be. Uh, we, we have so much to offer um, in, every, in every aspect of art, from, from theater to cinema to music. Um, yeah, it's growing, it's beautiful. And I hope, you know, the next generation keeps exploring and keeps, um, yeah. Is, um, is music um, your front of, of everything? Is it, the, is it the message that you wanted to deliver to everyone? No. 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 Music is just, um, it's just the tool that I'm using. Um, it's not, if you're, if you're asking me if it's like the priority, the number one priority, no, 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 no. Um, I believe music, um, music should be there for life. Like life is, is much more bigger than just, I am, you know, I want to be, the best musician out there or it's it's not it's not for me at least i like balance i like i love that part of me that is a musician but it is not the only part of me you know that's just something that really adds a lot of expression to my life it allows me to uh express myself in the best way i can um but i'm sure if there if it wasn't music it would have been something else for sure Sure, and 
talking about the music career and your background, uh, Roba, is there any musicians in the family? How, how did the whole thing came about? Um, my cousin was singing when I was young. Uh, I don't think she's still singing today. Uh, okay. But my grandmother, my grandmother was in a choir in back in the fifties, and um, it's called. It was called um, Jawqat al Talia, mm -hmm. and uh, the choir of Talia. And they stopped for a few decades, and then they brought it back um, about ten years ago. They brought back uh, old members and newer members to the choir. And um, all my life, she was telling me how she she used to sing in that choir. And finally, I got to see her on stage singing uh, when she was, you know, in her 80s. <laughs> so that was wow. a, full circle, a full circle that I'm very thankful for. I do hope that you will be able to share some of these uh, stories at, at later stage, maybe on social media or maybe a photo of her, just to remind our viewers of this uh, particular uh, lady that she was inspiring uh, you and your, 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 your career with the music. That's amazing. And when was the, um, the first act as um, live for Ruba Shamshum? Was this long time ago? Oh yeah, it was probably 2007, no, yeah, 2007, I think I was a part of a rock band. Uh, it was, uh, you know, we were singing uh, Cranberries, uh, Alanis Morissette, Metallica, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> it was, that was my first experience uh, on stage and it was really, really nice, uh, but then I discovered jazz. <laughs> yeah. what a then shift I, what a shift I discovered Bossa Nova and jazz and I was like oh my god what is this amazing sound it just Bossa Nova to me sounded like like nature I don't know like uh, the sea like something that I haven't heard before and I think that's why this music is so magical you know it, it can bring you a whole country with it <laughs> that's great Roba, tell us a bit more also, please, about the um, the funny side of you. I mean, it's really a difficult question. It's not a question. I just wanted to, to see what actually was the most um, trouble you've got um, into as, as a musician. Do you remember anything funny like this? The most trouble I've got into? Yeah, like, did you uh, experience any um travel on the stage or backstage or is there is a funny story that you can share with us i remember one time i was singing in this very 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 small bar in in dublin uh i think i think the musicians on stage were more than the audience that like that's <laughs> how small it was it was just a standard gig you know just singing standards on the spot and I remember there were American tourists on the bar, and I heard them saying, "Oh no, I don't think she's very boring." <laughs> <laughs> I was That's like, oh <laughs> "It does happen often that, well, not that often, but sometimes there is more musicians than the audience, unfortunately." <laughs> and this is very painful, I guess. Ah, yeah, but it, it uh, you know, it teaches you resilience, doesn't it? Like, it teaches you that, you know, you're not going to be the king all the time. You're going to have <laughs> that day sometimes, <laughs> and it's okay. Like, we, you, at least you have the musicians on stage to to make jokes about it, so. Yeah. So Talking of the stage, Roba, do you interact with your audience? What What do you mean? Do you talk to the audience through the songs? Do you explain the wordings, the meanings? Okay, you mean in, in a live performance? Yeah. Uh, of course, of course. And especially when I, you know, we're living in Dublin, uh, because, you know, I was singing in Arabic mostly, and 
the audience was English speaking, I had to, you know, had to, I, I loved um, telling stories about, you know, making, making, up, making stories around the songs and connecting the songs together in order, you know, to really bring them into my world. And, um, and people would really, you know, interact with me. They, they would be very uh, interested in hearing, you know, the story around the song. And, you know, you, you feel the difference between when you actually, when people understand the background and when they have no clue yeah. what you're saying about, basically. Well, so, we yeah. talked about the audience and the interaction. What was your favorite venue so far you performed at? Ooh, favorite venue. Venue, in terms of technical, technicalities. Venue, space, atmosphere. <laughs> I, I know say, it's all random questions, but I'm always interested to find out. I would say Rich Mix was a great venue for, you know, for sound, because as a, as a musician, you get to, to play in many venues that the, the sound is really bad, and it really changes the... The whole experience when when the sound is great and you can yeah. hear everyone on stage really well um i feel like it elevates the, the performance so rich mix yeah. was really and it was also you did the uh, two two shows in rich mix if i'm not mistaken yeah, yeah. you uh, and also you were guest in uh, the arab women artists now festival a few years ago with the ghalia bin ali I remember, um, and and um, yeah, and I think that was the first appearance in London, right? That was the first appearance in London. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was. Yeah. I wasn't very comfortable <laughs> because uh, why? Because Ghania sings such a different style than I do. She's more tarab. She is more, you know, oh. and I. I I felt like I, mm, it's a different style. I felt like people but came it to was, It was an excuse for you uh, to be on the platform and also for Londoners to know you and, you know, to, to make the connection. So maybe it was good in that sense. That, in that sense, for sure, yes. <laughs> and anyway, both of you complement each other. It's different genres, but in the end of the day, it's a very yeah. interesting platform, and it was a very um, a successful evening, I thought. Of course. Yeah. Anyway, looking back at history, we need to look at the future now and tell us more. Do you have any plans for next year? What would we expect from Roba Shamshun? Yeah, so many. First of all, um, starting to release the EP. Um, you know, it's not, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna release it um, all at once because it does not make any sense at the moment since yeah. there's no gigs at the moment. So uh, yeah, releasing the album, um, making more live performances, you know, uh, live performances as in um, a video of a live performance. Um, and hopefully, you know, working more with visuals and music, which is something that I always, it's always in, in the back of my head, you know, I, I always this is, want uh, This is really interesting because the combination between your visuals and your uh, lyrics and, and the music is, is stunning. And we encourage you very much to do so, Roba. This is a really great part of what you do and you are good at. Um, we have only a few minutes left, Roba. I would like to use this opportunity and ask you please to share with fans and audience and our family here and friends all of your um, contact details, how people can reach out, how they can follow you, where they can follow you. Please, the stage is yours. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoy. I I enjoy speaking to you always. By the way, Aster is one of the best cooks I've ever met in my life. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very well. Thank you um, for the compliment. It's a pleasure. You can find me everywhere on social media, Instagram, Facebook, 
uh, YouTube. Sorry, that's my that's my cat's food now. It's turning. <laughs> What's her name? You can sorry. What's her name, the cat? Her name is Zelda. Oh, Zelda. Okay, great. So you back to the social media where people can find you, please. Yeah, you can find also, you can go to Spotify and listen to my uh, music, Spotify and Rami, Deezer. Um, I think it's linked somewhere, my Spotify, right? Yeah, I think uh, on the screen there is your, um, yeah, yeah, there is the Spotify there. You can find my songs, my singles, my album, my collaborations. Um, yeah, it's all there. And Bandcamp is a good source for supporting artists as well. If you want to support, you can go to Bandcamp and, you know. Yeah. Buy and music. where is Shamat? Shamat is available online as well for yeah, people yeah. to purchase the album, yeah? Either from my website or from Bandcamp. Uh, uh -huh. It's everywhere, basically. You can... Yeah. And uh, your website is? It's rubashamshum.com. That's amazing. And, yeah, you Great. can find all the info, any, you know, news would be there. That's yeah. it. Fantastic. Thank you so much for uh, a beautiful conversation today and very sincere one. And mm -hmm. um, Ruba, a very good luck to you and hopefully we'll see you in live events very, very soon. Thank you, everyone, for watching tonight. And thank you, Aaron, the producer, for uh, all of your time today. And I wish you all a very pleasant evening. Thank you so much for watching. Good night. Bye-bye. للأسود في العيون دمع محتال وبلحظة هالعمر بيت